So hard. Yes, yes. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. You'll, you'll, you'll be all right. Thank you, everybody, for coming to our Men in Science Fiction and Fantasy panel. <laughs> <laughs> our science fiction um, fans and writers, we pride ourselves on. Oh, oh yes, I should use that. Our science fiction fantasy writers, we and readers, we pride ourselves on being forward thinking and on being open-minded and open to diversity. This is the 21st century, but men are still terribly underrepresented in our genre. <laughs> and, okay, arguably, sometimes they're their own worst enemy, but I think we do need to address what the issues are that are holding them back. And to do this, I have a very distinguished panel. Um, I have Juliette McKenna, um, martial artist and award-winning epic fantasy author. <laughs> Josie Bedford, um, internationally renowned um, folk singer and also writer in multiple genres. And Mr. Adrian Tchaikovsky, the husband of the opera singer Annie Tchaikovsky. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to start with the question of sentimentality. It's often levelled as a charge against men's fiction that they can be terribly sentimental. I'm thinking of things like their attachment to starships that really should have been superannuated and really should have gone to the dump, and the whole naming of swords thing. <laughs> so, Adrian, what do you say to that charge that is often levelled against your, your gender in our genre? Well, it's. I, I think it's a, a crass generalisation, really, that the. Oh, that, really? Yeah. <laughs> We have Serenity, we have the Millennium Falcon. Those things should have gone to a scrapyard, they should have been upgraded decades ago. And then Sword, Orchrist, Glamdring, Anduril, Oathkeeper, Oathbreaker, Stormbringer. You know, the, the list is endless. Widowmaker. <laughs> Not only Swords, but then the cars as well. You just really can't get over that. Christine? No, I'm not sure about that. What do you think about that, Adrian? Uh, well, it's, I'm, I think it, 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 it's a gross... It's a gross um, I, yes. There are at least three... That, that's, quite, that's quite correct. What do you think about it, Juliet? <laughs> yeah, I just think it shows a remarkable lack of originality. <laughs> Related to that... Men sometimes, again, and I'm sure this is not true of all of them, we don't want any sweeping generalisations on this panel at all. We are trying to be constructive here. Can be a little non technical. <laughs> and I believe Juliet had a particular point she wanted to raise in relation to epic fantasy stew. <laughs> there is quite simply no way that you can cook any form of edible stew in a hurried half hour in the middle of a wilderness <laughs> while you are trying to find grass and water for your horse. <laughs> you know, it, it's so frequent that the men, they simply don't have the grasp of these technical details. You know, the, the essential underpinnings that create work thoroughly convincing world building. <laughs> well, not just you, but I mean, just let's take electricity, for instance. They just don't grasp the idea that there are three colours of electricity. And everybody can see that, because when you get to the traffic lights, there are red, yellow and green. <laughs> and I've never yet met a man who understood that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that, that that's the, the, the case, but... Uh, um... Thank you, Adrian. Um... <laughs> And another issue, and it's a bit of a delicate one, bromance. Yeah, I mean, there is a time and a place for interaction, but quite often the way that men handle it, I don't know. Oh, defend yourself, Adrian. Defend yourself. Well, I mean, it, it is quite frustrating that in, in our genre, there are, you don't get scenes where two men can talk together for ten minutes without mentioning football, for example. <laughs> I, you know, I, they, I think they should be some sort of test for this. Though. But the thing is, with the bromances, they're so coy. They never really follow through, do they? They always end that little bit too early. They never really satisfy, do they? <laughs> well, I mean, one foot on the floor is all you can expect, really, from a man writer. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, it's not just, um, you know, the, the, the bromances. The 
endless daddy issues. <laughs> you know, my name is Diego Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. You know, talk about a fixation. <laughs> Can you name one sensible female character who would drop off an orbiting space city because they had just discovered who was their father? <laughs> oh, sorry, Adrian. Did you want to say something? Uh, no, I'll, uh, I'll just sit here and smile. <laughs> I, think, I think we should give Adrian a chance to, answer, yeah, to speak. In a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we absolutely are not patronising. We're trying not to, but I understand you have a family, and you still write. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, your, your wife's here; she's come to support you. I mean, that that must be a great comfort to you to actually have the support of your wife. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. A simple yes would do fine. Uh, I mean, yeah. How how much of the actual ideas and plots and um, characterisation does she contribute to your writing? <laughs> I mean, obviously we do dis discuss matters and... Well, the, the thing about it is, Adrian, once you've had children, your hormones are really... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they really affect you. Well, I... I... <sighs> Look, it's very difficult to be a male science fiction writer. We all know... Um, many people do not even know that J.R.R. Tolkien is not a woman, <laughs> for example. <laughs> She's actually a very nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Adrian makes a fair point, and we should give him all credit to actually writing in his own name. You know, when you look at the example of A.E. Van Voigt and Ellie Modestic, <laughs> the number of male writers who just, you know, don't have the courage of their gender convictions <laughs> to write without hiding behind initials. Exactly. Highly applauded. Um, Related to the family issue as well, I... Don't take this wrong way, but you have lovely hair. <laughs> and you're also very tall. Do you find that sometimes when you actually want to talk about your work, the conversations you're having are actually about your looks? Um, that's meant as a compliment, not all patronising. <laughs> well, no, obviously, when I want to write a short character, I'll just kneel down when I'm typing, I suppose. <laughs> um, can you explain how the prevalence of men looking at uh, descriptions in writing of men looking at mirrors as they shave it seems to be such a recurrent trope, um, particularly when so many of them have beards. <laughs> um, well, it's... I, well, I admit it's, it's something I have been guilty of. I mean, when, you're, when you've got your first story or novel out, you do feel bound by certain... Um, conventions. Conventions, yes. <laughs> conventions of, 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 of the genre, but it's... You know, I'm, I'm hoping that once, once I have bought more than one out, assuming my publisher renews my contract, um, I will be given the chance to bring a, a, a more fully rounded male character to the... A strong, a strong male character, strong one might say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, I mean, strong male characters, they've been, well, you know, it's very difficult for a man to write strong characters, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. With my extensive martial arts experience, I have to say that uh, you know, the, the challenges for the male writer who doesn't have the hands-on practical experience of hand-to-hand -hand combat and sword fighting and guns and interplanetary space travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they really do try. <laughs> um, alas, we're running out of time. I'm just going to ask you one question. This is a personal thing that I've often wondered about my writers. Do you write in the shed? <laughs> yes. <laughs>